Howard Stern Show. I know when you get out of college, you just don't get a job right away unless you get a law degree or a doctor degree. Or, or some other skill that yeah. somebody needs. Yeah. No Stern has ever had a skill that anyone needed. <laughs> <laughs> and no Stern has ever. They don't come out with skills, those no, Sterns. No, they don't. <laughs> We have skills no one needs. It takes them a while to find their way. It does. <laughs> it does. It could take years. But, no, I, you know, I know I panicked when I got out of college. I was in such bad shape mentally. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> what I do mean, you mean by that? Mentally bad shape. I was just filled with insecurity. I, had, oh, I went to college for four years. I had grown up my entire life saying I'm going to be on the radio. And I never once was on the radio, except the campus radio station, which any idiot could be on. Uh, ne no teacher ever said, hey, let me hear a tape of yours, or critiqued it, or there was no supervision you at the college. You never had an internship at never a real had, radio station? Never had an internship, really? nothing. I what? just, in my head, said, I'm going to be on the radio. Mm -hmm. And, you know, imagine you get out, and all of a sudden, who's looking for me on the radio? <laughs> Nobody knows you. And knows me, I'm not connected <laughs> in any way. A an internship would have been a smart thing. Yeah. The radio station would have said, hey, he's a good guy. Something, some sort of connection to radio. I would have known something about radio. Right, you might have understood what it was all about. I had no clue. <laughs> I had no effing clue. But maybe I would have developed some contacts. I see these interns here. They're smart. They network a little bit. Sure. Some of them end up working here. They end up on the E-channel. They end no, up somewhere, right. you know. You can tell a kid who knows what he's doing. Yeah. Or she. Unbelievable. So you just got out and... Fell apart. I fell apart. I, I went. I went home to my parents' house, and they go, well, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'm going to go find a job," and they went, "Okay." <laughs> and I had a suit. Good idea. You got a suit. I got a suit. I put it on, and every day I'd take a briefcase filled with resumes, and I got completely freaked out. I I visited a bunch of radio stations. Yeah. Now at that time, did you still have your long hair? Did you cut your hair or? Yes, yeah, so the professor said you have to cut your hair. I see. So I cut my hair. And, <laughs> and like my, so I wanted to line up a job. The last two months of college, I said, I'm going to line up a radio job. Right. And I made an air check, which is when you cut up a radio show. And I, I did that. And I walked into this radio station, a progressive. I figured I could work at one of these stations and let you play whatever kind of music you want. And those were dying off. They were, they were no longer yeah, having Yeah, there were those. only one or two left. But there was a station in Newton, Massachusetts called WNTN in Newton, the progressive AM radio station. Mm -hmm. They played progressive music. And I said, I'm going over there. I drive over. I meet the program director who had just gotten the job. And he said, okay, you're hired. Said, so right away, you I get said, a job. I said, this is easy. I'm still in college. I'm working at WNTN in Newton, Massachusetts. I'm That's happy. That's good. I get on a couple of times. He tells me what he's going to pay me. He was going to pay me a couple of bucks. I was like, hey, okay, I'm a professional now. Yeah, payday I'm comes. I'm in the business. Payday comes, yeah. no paycheck. All right. I said to the guy, where's the paycheck? He <laughs> that goes, sucks. He goes, you're horrible. <laughs> oh, no. He goes, uh, I don't have to pay you. You're lucky to be here. You're horrible. Are you serious? No kidding. He goes, you're terrible. I was. I was horrible. Yeah, but, yeah, but a you guy. You make a deal, you make a deal. Right. This guy he was has not, to pay for your time. This guy was not honorable. They, he could, was, they could pull that crap on radio on those. He was a BU student. And uh, he, uh, I guess he graduated or so, did someone made him a program. The station had no money. Was he any good? He was horrible. He was so bad. <laughs> he had sure to do, he had to do at the time, the FCC made you do Sunday morning public affairs programming. So he does it. And he, I don't know, he interviewed somebody for public affairs from the community. And uh, on the tape said the F word. He taped <gasps> what? It. It, it was a tape you play on Sunday morning. So he forgets to cut out the F word. He plays it. He writes a letter to the FCC reporting himself and begging for mercy. What a dope. I mean, if the guy was a, no one was listening to this oh station. Oh, my god. Guy was a total moron. <laughs> I said, well, maybe no one heard it. Oh, no, he, he, it's someone yeah, out of here. Yeah, wait to be reported. No, he turned himself in and threw himself on the mercy of the FCC. The FCC never even contacted but this guy. What was your deal? Your payment contingent on you not sucking or no, something? No, he, he, and then he said, we have no money. He says, I never get paid either. Oh. He, he admitted to me, but I think he did get paid. I don't know what it was. Well, there were some stations that you wouldn't get regular mm -hmm. paychecks. They'd pay you when they got the money. Right. So you could get paid <laughs> this month and not get paid again for well, another three right. months. If one of the sponsors, I guess, which they had few of, decided to pay them, maybe they'd pay someone. Right. But who knows? Well, that's like a bad bookie. We used to call them bad bookies. They wouldn't pay you until their loser, you know, the other yeah. guys paid right. up and you never yeah. got paid. Well, it was bad. And I finally said, 
I think I'm going to keep working here because... At least you're in radio? And I tried, but I, I had my all my dignity was gone. <laughs> and I finally said, uh, look, I'm leaving. And he could have cared less. He goes, go ahead. Well, who's going to hire you? <laughs> he was right. And, and I got completely freaked out. But did you try to go to other radio stations after that? Well, several weeks later, WNTN and Newton became a middle of the road. You know, they played Percy Sledge, uh -huh. and, you know, Dean Martin records. Right. And they brought in these professional sounding announcers. And I realized I had no business being in the business, that these guys <laughs> sounded so good on the air. But, all right, I was now armed with a new tape, of my, and I wrote down on my resume, WNTN, you know, professional disc jockey. Right. Two days. And I drove all the way up to Maine, <laughs> where my cousin Richie and Julie lived. I'd go visit them, and I'd say, well, in Maine, I'll be a hit, because someone's got to take me yeah, to Maine. Yeah, they got to need people in Maine, right? Maine, right? No, yeah. It's effing Maine. And there was a disc jockey in Maine uh, a, 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 who became a program. He was a disc jockey in Boston, one of these AM... Top 40 disc jockeys had something of a reputation. I can't think of the guy's name. J.J. something. And J.J. looked like he was 900 years old. He'd moved up to Maine. He, and he was, was no J.J. And he was working at the rock and roll radio station, Progressive. You, you know, you play hippie records and all that kind of stuff, you know. Right. And I met with J.J. He saw that I worked at WNTN and Newton. He was anxious to meet me. He had a meeting with me, and I never heard from him again. Oh. <laughs> so I was unemployable in Maine. In now, let me ask Bangor, you something. Maine. Oh, God. I was unemployable. The guy turned me down. He goes, maybe if I have a weekend shift, I'll let you come work Did he here. listen to the tape in front of you? No, not him. Okay. That's I not said, good and then the I said, you know what? I'm going to contact WBCN in Boston. See? I'll go for the big time. All right. I know yeah, why are you wasting your time? <laughs> and I went down to BCN, and they had hired many of the disc jockeys from WNTN and Newton. Okay. And I walk in with my tape, and the program director comes out, who was Tony Berardini at the time. And he walks out, and he came out to meet me. He says, WNTN, we hire a lot of our people. I'm anxious to meet you. Oh. I said, thank you. I said, now, you know, I'm getting some respect. Guy comes out, shakes my hand. He goes, I'm going to check out this tape myself. He listened. To, he must have thrown up. I mean, if you heard this tape, I must. Have, don't I have any? I don't have the goddamn tape. If you heard this tape, first of all, I for some reason when I would be on the radio, I, you know, I got so nervous my voice sounded very, very foggy, froggy, like really? ah, like this. You know, I've I've done that for you. Like well, this. yes, yes. And not even deep. I have trouble. I was so nervous. It was hard to talk, and and I, I and for some reason I'd hear myself through the headphones and I thought you shouldn't breathe like you shouldn't take a breath oh. so I'd go this is how it's done and, 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 and I didn't want to breathe I wanted to, I don't know what I was thinking it sounded to me like ditch jockeys didn't have to take a breath or so I, I wanted to I couldn't figure out how to talk into the goddamn microphone you were trying to sound like a traditional announcer I wanted to sound like the guys on the TV commercials mm -hmm. and, and they weren't looking for that right. they're looking for a natural sounding kind of guy and I was out of my frigging mind. I mean, these guys, I'm telling well, you. Well, he had no guidance. Nothing. When this guy at WBCN heard this, he must, he must have said, I'm going to have this guy arrested for <laughs> claiming he worked at WNTN. Yeah, Wasting a, tape. He, he's, he's a crackpot. I mean, Meg Griffin heard me at the beginning of my career. And, and I think I was the laughing stock of the radio station I eventually worked at. She could tell you. I don't think those people thought highly of me. See, but then you but, were forced to be yourself, sort of, which was great. Well, man. Well, what happened was, after the WBCN thing where I knew the guy listened to my tape. He was excited to listen and never called me. I called him two times after that. I never oh, dear. picked up the phone. And then I went over to WCOZ, which was the new rock station in Gosh. Boston. And it was a big hit rock station in Boston. Clark Schmidt was the program director. I walked in. I said, I worked at WNTN Newton. The guy comes right out and wants to have a meeting with me. He's this looking Newton for... uh, station was something. Yeah, he was looking for new... Yeah, but I was there at the end. You see, they figured I'm a professional. Right. And this guy walks out, this Clark Schmidt, and he goes, I'm looking, and he talked like this. And he was on the air. I mean, he was horrible. <laughs> and he goes, hey, how you doing, uh, Mr. Stan, Howard? I go, Clark Schmidt. I was like, wow, Clark Schmidt. I'm meeting Clark Schmidt. WCOZ. <laughs> so I went, wow. You had this guy on Captain Ken Shelton. It was a happening station. Lisa Carlin, oh. all these big-time announcers. I go, and this guy's giving me the King Tut treatment, right. rolling out the red carpet. I go, he, he goes, you got your air check? I go, yeah. 
Here's my. I only wish I had someone else's air check to give him. <laughs> I gave him my air check. He says, I'll get back to you, man. Give me a call tomorrow. I go, wow, okay. Wouldn't answer my calls. Oh, you know, they probably that. went back and laughed at this yeah. tape. It was horrible. I don't think they <laughs> laughed. So I was dejected. <laughs> I took my tape and I got in a car and I drove to Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Now, you couldn't find a bigger hole in the ground. They had a rock station. I, I looked up all the rocks. I, I right. said, this guy's going to, at least I'm a warm body. Right. I can speak English. English. I can put a sentence together. He's got it. Done. I am going to get hired. <laughs> so I remember what it was like to come out of college. You know, oh, so yeah. when my kid graduates college, I ain't, you know, I ain't going to send them out and boot them out into the street. That's devastating. So I remember being humiliated. I go to Pittsfield, Massachusetts. And this guy, I don't know, he he, he had nothing for me, too. He listened to the tape. Really? He goes, hey, a guy. But nobody listened to it in front of you. They just took it and. Well, well, this guy was not. No, no. Him I called, and he did he did pick up the phone, and he said, listen, uh, you big-time city guys, you're not going to be happy living out in Pittsfield. I go, no, 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 no. I go, I would be very happy. He goes, no, no, no. I, it's, he, goes, That's a, he goes, That's okay. Oh, he gave you the rap like he's doing you. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He goes, you're not going to want to live you're, here. You're too good for us. Meanwhile, right. I was awful. It's like when you break up with a chick. Finally, I went to visit my sister, who lived in Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. Right. This was the last straw. She lived out in the boondocks. Called my sister. I go, I'm coming up there. I'm going to visit with the radio station. She goes, oh, good. You live right near me. I go, don't be too quick, Tonto. <laughs> yeah. Uh -oh. yeah. Don't, uh, don't uh, get too excited. Don't put all your eggs in that basket. This is like 26 years ago or something. Maybe 30 oh, years ago. more than 30 that, years. Because yeah. my niece was just born. Pam, she's like 30 now. Yeah. I go up to my sister. I go, she's got a new baby. I'm thinking to myself, how am I ever going to have a baby? <laughs> I mean, I'm a mess. How am I ever going to have children? How am I ever going to have a life with a with a wife and kids? That scene in Private was... Parts where you had, the, you had that car all, like, uh, like packed. I just picture, like, your life for a few years was always packing oh, that car. Oh, horrible. <laughs> oh, packing nothing. I carried a brown paper bag with a toothbrush. I didn't even have clothes. <laughs> I was like a, I was like a nut. You had to drive to Detroit. He was like I, a door to door salesman, door to door radio man. <laughs> and finally, she lives up there. Like I go to Altoona, Pennsylvania. I go up. They say they need a guy. To, they have an automated like, like a television station. You have to sit there and watch the tower. And uh, and then once in a while they have a radio station. They're starting up. They, they let you on the radio station do a couple of shifts. The guy didn't hire me. That guy didn't hire you. Yeah. Jeez. What did I, you do to him? You gave him that tape? I figured I'm doomed. It's that damn tape. <laughs> I'm doomed. That tape was like, you ever see the tape in the, uh, you know that movie? The Ring. The Ring. <laughs> that tape, that's why they, if anyone finds it, don't play it. <laughs> They'll ruin you. <laughs> that tape was a nightmare. It was like, WTBU? <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was like, it was like so bad. You should have done Mission Impossible. You should have had it say it's going to self-destruct in five seconds. <laughs> so I figure I got to find another career, but I did send the tape to WRNW in Westchester. Uh-huh. And little did I know the program director up there was sick of everything. He was an older guy. He had a couple of shifts here in the city at this radio station on weekends. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice guy, Donald J. Barnett. Oh, I remember that name. Yeah. And Meg and all of them, they didn't get along with him. There was, a, you know, they were all hippies playing on whatever they wanted. And he didn't, you know, he was all fed up with hippies. And, <laughs> he had um, to get away from the hippies. I walk in yeah, with a nice hippies. nice suit and short haircut. He looks at me, he goes, you're hired. <laughs> I might have something for he you. He never listened to the tape. He did listen to the tape. Oh, he did. He listened to the tape. He called me, he goes, I'm going to give you something. He goes, I'm going to put you on 10 to 2 at night. He goes, because I think you're going to show up. I go, what not do you mean? because you're going to be good. No. Not, he goes, you seem reliable. <laughs> like a nice guy. He'll be here. And I turned it down. What? I got scared. I listened to the station. I heard Meg, and I heard this guy Joe from Chicago who was on. <laughs> and I heard uh, all the different people who were working there. And I said, I'm not good enough. I'm, <gasps> I'm, uh, I can't do this. Somebody gave you a job, gave and me you a turned job. it down? I turned it down. I turned it down, and a guy named Harris Allen got the job. I listened to him a couple of weeks later and he sounded so good. Harris Allen. I he had know a Harris big Allen. deep voice, Harris Allen. Yeah. And I went, well, he deserves the job over me. Uh. I, I'm a loser, failure. I don't deserve to be on the radio. <laughs> oh, and then I set out to go find an alternative so career after four years. you decided you got to do something else? So I started taking the train every day into the city. My parents, I, I would get, a, I had a briefcase full of resumes. You should see this resume. <laughs> 
<laughs> if you saw this resume, you'd throw up. It was a big lie. What could you know, do? and I would go into the city, <laughs> and there was a coffee shop. I, I didn't. People were all walking around looking like they had something to do. Everybody had something to do. You should see. I would walk around, and, and everyone was on their way to somewhere. And oh, I wait had, a minute. you got to tell me what was on that resume. Did you have jobs when you were in college? I, 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 I know. But I, 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 I once had a job in a plumbing supply house. <laughs> I wrote that down. I wrote down that I was summa cum laude. Okay. You know, all this stuff. I, uh, but, I wrote down in, WNTN, professional broadcaster. And I had two resumes. Did you have any... Um, yeah. Did you were you in any organizations in no, college? No, no, nothing, nothing, nothing. nothing. But I talked about Key Club in high school. You know, I, I made <laughs> you a, talk a, that up. Yeah, I showed up for one meeting, <laughs> and which is a sad story too. How I got into Key Club, <laughs> I don't even want to go into that. That'll that'll take me off track of this story. Oh dear, Key Club's a horrible story. In high school. Key Club was for real cool guys in my high school. Like, really? you only got in. It was almost like a fraternity, and they only took two oh. sophomores. <laughs> and I had just moved from Black Community, Roosevelt. I didn't know a soul. <laughs> and they would have these interviews. Uh-huh. And a bunch of the cool jocks and stuff said, you know what? None of us want to volunteer to, like, go be Santa Christmas time <laughs> or, you know, or do any yeah, of that. really do the stuff that Key Club has to do. They got together. They said, we got to hire one ass <laughs> who will actually do all our work. <laughs> I'm your man. So they saw, I'm, you know, I'm a good BS. I go, I'm really, I'm really anxious. I, I sounded like I was ready to join the Peace Corps. <laughs> I want to go out. I want to do right. it. You're going to be a missionary. They brought me in, and within a week, I was dressed in a Santa costume <laughs> with a pot collecting money on the streets of Rockville Center. After school every day, miserable. <laughs> And all these other guys would drive by. How you doing? Yeah. I go, They'd run it, r drive by, and make fun of you. Well, if they needed change, they, you know, they. <laughs> Your friends from the Key Club. The key Club. So they, I was the peckerhead. So <laughs> I stopped going. And they, they were Good like, for you. I was the biggest disappointment of Key, key Club uh, because they figured, well, they got a guy here who's gonna be grateful. You quit. I figured I'd make some friends. They wouldn't want to be my friend. <laughs> so uh, I get this job. A WR and W turn it down. Now I got to go into the city every day, and I have to <laughs> get a job. My father's like, "You got to get a job, you know, of course." And I wanted a job. He was putting job. pressure on you. Well, you know, I put the pressure on myself. I mean, I got I got a college. He goes, "We got a college degree." <laughs> but, well, I mean, he was he wasn't helping, saying, "Take your time." He was no, like, well, hey. he was he was being understand. He felt bad, but I know, but I know under his breath, he had to be saying somewhere. <laughs> I talk, he said to me a couple of times. You, you you got a communications degree. <laughs> All of these radio guys, they, they could be janitors, or you, you'll be competing with jan. Anyone can talk. <laughs> you're competing with janitors, and uh, you should have uh, taken acting classes. I begged you to take a, a <laughs> acting class or some of stock. <gasps> you, you're, you're wasting your time going at Dopey Well Met with the camping, <laughs> and uh, you know I told you what to do. You know he was he was nervous for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I was ready for a nervous breakdown. What am I going to do? Oh, my How goodness. am I going to get out of college and get a job? Did you have any idea what field you were going to attend? No, Just so like... I would walk into the Manhattan every day. Everyone looked like they knew where they were going. I see, and I had my briefcase, and I'd walk around the street with the New York Times looking at the one ad. <laughs> Did you go to interviews? Well, you know, you'd see, you'd see these ads. They were intimidating. It says, self-starters, no losers need apply. Oh, I said, well, I'm a loser, <laughs> and I'm not a self-starter. I, mean, I don't even know what that means. Self-starter. Self-starter. I, I no hated losers. that term when people used to say that. And even my father would would look at the one answer me. He goes, oh, this one says no losers need apply. <laughs> you can't go in on that. Check that so one I, off. <laughs> like, hey, well, here's another one you can't Here's remember. another one. I was like, well, you're right. <laughs> Scratch. He goes, self-starter, no loser. He goes, who thinks of themselves as a loser? You can go... <laughs> I mean, no losers need a fly. That's some ad in that New York uh, Times. They should be ashamed of themselves. the headline would be, no losers. No losers. <laughs> I mean, oh, damn it. If they were only looking for a loser, I'd be in. Also, I, I would walk around the streets and buy lottery tickets <sighs> with whatever little money I had. And I'd come home and my father would go, what is that? I go, I bought a lottery ticket. He goes, only losers buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> He goes, only people who are unemployed buy lottery tickets. Well, that's if why you're I... actually making money, you wouldn't be buying lottery tickets. You're not going to win the lottery. I go, well, something's got to give. That's why I couldn't go to the interviews. I'm a loser, evidently. Yeah. So then I began, you know, I'm looking at all these things, and I, I, I would take any job. So I, um, I saw it says assistant buyer, no experience needed, at Bloomingdale's. 
Bloomingdale's? You, 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 be, you, buy, you buy clothing, I guess. How would you know what to do about I that? I don't, but they said a training program. <laughs> now I went to four years of college, I'm going to enter a training program. <laughs> and my friend Elise Rosenfeld was uh-huh. a buyer already at Bloomingdale's. Right. She got out of college and she was making good money and I went, yeah, I'll, I'll buy women's clothing. <laughs> I don't understand how I'll, I'll, maybe I'll, they'll give me a management job and I'll work at Bloomingdale's. Uh-huh. So I sent in an application. And in the meantime, I'm walk, I go to the city every day looking for a job. But you used to go to that diner and just sit there all day, right? Yeah. I mean, you didn't make any, what was the purpose of leaving home when you didn't have any place to go? So here's a guy on the phone saying he doesn't want to listen to my autobiography, so forget it. I'm going to drop uh, it. That's all I need. I need just see, one. See, I just need one. Want. We were having such a good time. Yes, what Dave. are you talking about? Yeah, that's right, Pinocchio. Is it? Oh, there he is. Oh, He's back. Man. How long are we, we going to be subjected to your autobiography? All right, if you don't want I'm, you, you know what? All it takes is one person. Him? You're going to listen to? Yep. He's I, right. He's I in the audience. Book. If he's not enjoying this. We all this... read your book. We don't have to hear it for an hour. No, and this isn't about the input. guy this who book. answers the loser ad. Right. <laughs> the loser ad. The loser no, I'm cutting, ad. I'm cutting off. Way. I'm cutting off then. You're absolutely right. That's all uh, I need. That's enough for anyone. If I, if I. The book was great. You don't, make... to, you don't have to tell everybody your, your whole uh, life story. All right. That's it. You're single. Yes, Gary. Hold on a second. I Listen. What you were talking about is fascinating. Every one of us went through it, whether you work in this business or not. Right. It's not in your book. And if he doesn't want to hear your autobiography, he should shut off the show because that's what the show yeah, is. Yeah, it's every day an autobiography. Uh, no, yeah, no, it's, it's not. No, but I mean, it's a very and if that people are feeling that way, I'll shut up. He's not people. No, no. Yeah. Hey, Gary. Yeah. Uh, do you have to, uh, any, uh, uh, any floss for your teeth? Yes, oh, I do. All right, thank you. So thank you. you. Right, so have a great day, y'all. F you. We should hire that guy as a writer. Yeah. He's a buyer. Yeah. Well, anyway, let's take a break. Oh, that's a shame. I know. He, he threw so me. He threw fun. me. I looked over and I saw that and I just went, okay. I was okay. not here what happened at Bloomingdale's. Yeah. Really? He was going to be a buyer. <laughs> at Bloomingdale's. <laughs> I mean, think he could about have been that. picking the clothes that you see in Bloomingdale's. No, but so I kept walking around and then I saw a uh, uh, assistant director. You could be learn to and be in the film business. Oh, okay. But you have to go out to California. I go out to California. Why not? There's nothing happening here. So I wrote a letter to that. Assistant director. You know, uh-huh. at the uh, at the film, make movies. I'm sent in that. I feel maybe I'll be a film director. That doesn't seem that hard. <laughs> you know, if I could. It doesn't seem like you have to have much skill to do that. Yeah, but I didn't know anything about it. Right. I mean, how do you make a movie? I don't know. I don't know how to make a movie. And I'm looking around for jobs, and I'm walking in the street. And I'd go to the same coffee shop. It was depressing. I mean, and I'd sit there and eat lunch, and I'd come home and tell my parents, would they go, what'd you do all day? I go, oh, I was out interviewing and in- resumes, but I was in a coffee shop. But right. that was my, so you were lying to them? Yes. Oh, because I wondered why you left home every day with no place to go. Because I, I felt at least it looked like I was doing something, uh. and I was embarrassed. Then I then I started walking around Manhattan one day, and I must have looked like a mark, because four guys drive up to me in a car, and they go, hey, you, come over here. You want an opportunity? I go, okay. <laughs> I go, what do I got to do? How are you at Oral? No, oh. the four guys go... We want you to come to a meeting. We'll reveal the plan. Uh, I go, oh, no. this sounds like criminal something. <laughs> and I, I said, and look, they're not bothering you. I'm the only idiot they're bothering. They must <laughs> they must have radar. No. They must have been, st- you know, staking out that corner, and they saw you day after day. They must know I'm a loser. <laughs> so, like, give me the address to go to. At least I'll have somewhere to go. <laughs> then I find out they're Amway guys. Oh. Oh, that's that. That you'd rather be like the mafia. Or something. Yeah, it was Amway guys, and they were. And if they suckered me into it, I guess it's a pyramid thing, or I don't know. There's a pyramid. I don't know what it I is. I don't know. It's not an illegal pyramid. Not illegal. But if you go work for them, they make money off you. My yeah. buddy talked talk me into going to an Amway meeting. It was Everybody's worth, been to one. Yeah, and it was so laugh. depressing. Right. Well, finally, I see. Is someone tells me some guy I know who seemed like a loser in high school tells me he's a media planner. At an advertising agency. I go, you're kidding. Well, you're an idiot. When you're able to do that. I should be able to do that. You're planning media? Media <laughs> planning, which means like you go into an advertising agency every day and you make you, you make a plan, I guess, to like if, if Planters Peanuts wants to advertise right. on television, you make the plan and you tell the buyers what to buy, what ads to buy. So that sounds exciting. It sounds sort of like communication. sort of in the business, yeah. I go in, they interview me, they go, what are your math skills? I go, excellent. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> and they go, all right, do you know anything about marketing? I go, well, of course. <laughs> and they give me a shot. They hire me. Wow. They gave me my own office with two other guys, you know, had an office. Uh-huh. Big desk, phone. <laughs> Got to wear a suit and tie every day. And my boss comes in the first day and he goes, okay. I want you to, he starts in with a calculator, and he's printing out sheets, and he goes, I want you to do workups on cost, uh, uh, this oh, no. CPM cost per thousands. Then I want you to call in Arizona, buy Arizona Diamondback something, baseball, football, whatever that is, <laughs> and get Planters Peanut. I was on the Planters Peanut account. Get Planters Peanuts and blah, 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 blah. I went, oh, my God. I turned to the guy next to me. I was in tears. I go, I don't know how to do any of this. He goes, I'll help you. I'll help you. Oh and he said, you know what? You know when you get an assignment in school and you're way, in way over your head? Yeah. I was in way over my head. <laughs> and the guy comes in. He goes, I want you to draw a map of the country and plot out where we're going to. Uh, 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 how Planters is going to attack the country. He goes, I want you to look up every Jewish newspaper in the country because Planters uh, makes a peanut oil and it appeals to Jews who are kosher. I go, yeah. And he goes, and then I want you to figure out cost per thousand divided by, uh, divided by, divided by. Oh I hear God. divided by. I'm like, I'm doomed. I'm gonna, I'm, they're going to find out. I don't know anything. <laughs> cost per thousand. I'm sitting there till 7, 8, 9 o'clock at night trying to finish these assignments like, like it's the SATs. Uh. I'm like, I'm in over my head. And what, just because you went to college, you assumed you can do all this, work all this No, he said he had experience in marketing. Oh, because yeah. of your lying. I lied. <laughs> I was doomed. I didn't. I was in a panic. What am I going to do? This is a good job, but why can't I be creative? I'm, I'm, I'm like, maybe I get a job copywriting or something. Right, maybe another department is where you should be. I had to start coming in on Saturdays to figure out my work that I couldn't do during the week. I'm sitting at the desk <laughs> pounding the... the my mother looked at me. She goes, what are you doing? You look green. Your skin is green. I go, I'm sick. I don't know what to do. She goes, what are you doing? I got a job, but it's killing she me. Goes, I explained my job. She goes, you're a creative guy. What are you doing? I go, I don't know. I don't know. This is horrible. <laughs> my boss says to me, you're a very hard worker. I like it. He liked me. It infuriated me that he liked me. Like, how could he like me? I'm not doing anything he right. He didn't even know he should throw you out. And he says to me, you better go buy ads for the Jewish newspaper. I call up the guy at the Jewish newspaper. He's some kind of <laughs> rabbi or something. And I'm on the phone with him. And I go, listen, rabbi, I got to get an ad in the paper. He goes, well, the newspaper, we get it out sometimes. Sometimes we don't. <laughs> you relax. And I went, oh, my God. This ain't the New York Times. I go back and tell my boss. He goes, you call that rabbi. You tell him you need an ad in that paper. I'm like, I'm like this is too much pressure. I'm going to fail. I thought you were a planner, not a, a salesman. I was everything, I, oh it appears. Goodness. Jack of all trades. <laughs> I wanted to be anything but what I was. All the other advertising jobs looked like fun. Guys were making movies. Guys were, you should see all the creative people. But writing copy. Oh, drawing storyboards. Account executives going out to lunch with the clients. And I'm in there busting my balls with the calculator. <laughs> Oh, that sounds like a nightmare. And a briefcase. And, and the guy says to me, you know, a lot of us come in on Sundays to catch up on our work. You don't have to wear a tie. Wow. And There's I, a perk. And I started going in on Sundays. So now you're working seven days a week. How much were they paying you at this job? I don't know. Then I started to say, man, I should have taken that radio job. What a jackass I am. And I told that to my dad. He goes, well, I know Ed Cosman over at WKTU. You know. I go, Yeah. WKTU was soft rock. It was uh -huh. this station. Right. Soft rock. I could do that. The mellow sound of WKTU. I could do that. I figured. <laughs> so my father says, I'll, I'll ask Eddie Cosman to play your tape for the program director. <laughs> and there comes that tape again. <laughs> Whoa. Like back with the tape. Coming around the corner. <laughs> and so uh, my father uses his influence because he knows a g big guy in radio. Yeah. Well, that's nice. And he says... Um, all right, he says, I'll get you a meeting with Ed Cosman. So I go into the city, WKTU, New York. Big station. Big station. Where and, was it at the time, you remember? Yeah, I don't even know. He's yeah. next to my father's recording studio. So, mm -hmm. you know, my father already thinks I'm a jerk. <laughs> and he's now getting the, he sees I'm desperate. He gets the friend involved. That's the worst thing. So <laughs> Cosman doesn't want to meet with me. He's a big time radio general manager. He doesn't want to meet with me. And here I am walking. I walk in. I go, uh, hi. He goes, look, I'm doing this as a favor for your father. Oh, no. There's two jobs in radio. Either you're in sales 
Well, you're on the air. Which is it? He goes, if you go on the air, you never make any money. He goes, if you want to be a salesman, I don't have any openings, but I'll keep you in mind. You go out and get some experience and then come and talk to me. Like, I don't want to be a salesman. That salesman sounds scary to me. Like, I'd actually have to. You'd already called the rabbi. You knew you. Didn't yeah, I don't have that ability. <laughs> so I give him the tape. He says, I'll play it for Larry Miller, the program director. Larry Miller was the buzz in radio back yes. then. You know, he was the guy who developed soft rock from KTU. He introduces me to Larry Miller. I go, hi. He goes, Cosman goes, I want you to listen to this tape and call this kid and tell him whether or not you'll hire him. I go home. I'm calling Larry Miller every day. I never heard from him. Finally gets on the phone. He goes, look, you're horrible. <laughs> you're not working at WKTU. Radio's not for you. Jesus. Oh, it was a nightmare. <laughs> You're like over six least, at this point. You over had six. some nerve calling them back when they weren't calling you. In the meantime, my father then calls in another favor from a guy. You know who the guy is. Oh, yeah. Roy Eaton. Mm -hmm. He worked at Benton and Bowles, the same advertising agency I'm working at. <laughs> You're at Benton and Bowles when he calls Roy. He calls Roy because I wanted to get into something creative, and right. Roy was in charge of, he was a music director right. at Benton and Bowles, and he's going to maybe give me a job in the creative side of things. Things were getting real bad at the advertising job. Finally, I walked in. I quit. They go, you giving notice? I go, no. I go, I, I got to get out of here. <laughs> Your notice get, is now? And, yeah, and they were pissed. Oh, dear. That very day, I get a call from Benton and Bowles, the whole creative department. They're going to hire me based on Roy Eaton's suggestion uh -huh. to work in their film division. Ooh. This is a big break. I'm going to get you a slow job. Your AV guy, you know, like an AV guy at in high school? At the bottom, at the bottom. You're going to be pushing a cart. Well, if they have a meeting with a client, I'm the guy who cues up the tape yeah, and yeah. all this you kind of stuff. You hit the button and yeah. change the slides, whatever. Yeah. But at Yay. least, I'm all excited. I go in for my job. I'm on there the first day. They give me oh, my assignment to show me equipment I need to learn to work and all this stuff. They call me into an office and they go, did you just quit <laughs> this company? I go, well, not really. Uh, they go, you didn't give any notice, did you? I go, no. They go, you're out of here. Oh. No. We can't imagine that. Oh. I blocked all this out, come to think of it. Wow. Yeah, was, you never told oh. us you were hired at Benton and Bowles and then fired on the same day. I was so humiliated. They said, leave now. Oh. <laughs> wow. And I had to go to Roy Eaton because he was my father's friend. And I said, thank you for recommending me. He goes, I understand that based on my recommendation, they hired you and you you, you left here with no notice. Oh. I go, I'm, ter I'm terribly sorry. He goes, I look bad. I go, I know. <laughs> I know. You, not half as bad as I look. Oh, no wonder you're still doing favors. And then my father's like, I hope nothing bad happens to Roy. He did me a favor. Now, now I'm like, I'm, I'm. Now you're getting everybody into trouble. And, and, uh, it's horrible. <laughs> right now at a young now age, I'm, you're just crazed with stress about now it. Now I need a job, any job. I don't care what the job. I've seen the paper. I, I'm, the words of Ed Cosman are ringing in my head. I see radio sales, no experience needed. I show up at an apartment in Queens. <laughs> oh! I walk in. There's four dejected-looking people sitting at a desk, and one guy. They go and go in and talk to this guy. I walk in. He's a fat guy. He's got his shirt off, and he's putting perfume under his armpit. <laughs> oh! That's a good way to start a meeting. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Sit down, kid. Yeah. Look. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and he goes, "All right, you want to sell time?" He goes, "We got some kind of arrangement where you can sell W Y N Y." which was a news, all-news FM station. Go out and sell ads, but don't take any money. Get it in trade. In other words, if, if a Chinese restaurant, go to restaurants, and if Chinese restaurants want to advertise on the all-news station, they have to give us a certain amount of meals. Oh. And we'll pay you cash. I go, you're kidding. Okay. That sounds like a weird business. So I went to a Chinese restaurant. I took the guy literally. I convinced this Chinese guy who speaks no English <laughs> to advertise on an all-news FM station, which I knew was getting no ratings. <laughs> I felt horrible for this guy. The Chinese guy was like, how many meals? Like, like thousands of meals. See, that's what you got to have in you to be a good uh, salesman. Yeah, yeah but no I heart. did it. Yeah, I, had no no, heart. I did it, and I went, how could I tell this nice Chinese guy who's some immigrant to go advertise on a station? They're even changing formats. It's, it's so bad. No, no one's listening no to it. No wonder Tom's making deals with God. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God, I feel awful. <laughs> I went in, I quit. When I go in to quit, they were raiding the place. The raiding? FBI or someone was calling out all of this guy's oh, records, Lord. and I think they were arresting him. Uh, I don't it know sounded what it, strange, this business. 
And I went back to the Chinese guy and I said, listen, it took me hours to, to explain to this guy how to advertise and stuff. I'm getting yelled at. It's been 50 minutes. Oh, taking a break. This is a great story. The whole, the you whole, can't leave us. This whole part of your life, don't you feel like you're betraying yourself because you wanted to be on the radio since you were five? Yeah, you know, I felt whole, awful. You know what I mean? Like, that's the worst part of yeah, it. Yeah, I just had no confidence. You're and, abandoning and, a dream. You know? Well, I went to the Chinese guy and I said to him, listen, don't advertise with anyone who comes in here and says, go on that station. It's horrible. He goes, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> He goes, he goes, I give you cash. He wanted to give me money. Oh, he really wanted the ad. He, he did. Him, I had him sold. He gave him inside information. I said, listen to me. Don't advertise on radio. It doesn't work. <laughs> You're a great salesman. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to talk the guy out of it. And now I'm trying to talk money. the guy out of advertising. He's like, what happened? You, you're telling me it was good. <laughs> the guy was giving you cash. I don't what even, are you, a split personality? I can't believe I met with this guy. I, you know, and I blocked all this out. It, it gives me the shakes to think about it. I, I was just so scared. Scared. I was just so frightened. That's I wanted to crawl into a hole. I wanted to crawl back into my mother's womb and have somebody care for me. I Nobody felt so told alone. You it was going to be like this. It was horrible. <laughs> it was horrible being out in the real world. Well, you know, that's what every kid is trying to get. You know, they're trying to get their freedom, trying to get into the real world. Finally, Allison said to me, you ought to call that guy back at that, ra that dumb radio station that was willing to hire you. I said, I think I will. I called the guy. And he gave me a midday job, a, t a New Year's Day. He had no one to fill in. He says, I'll give you fill-in work. This is the one who liked you because of yeah. your suit. Yeah. I, I begged him. I said, listen. I, he goes, you turned down my job. I go, I made a terrible mistake. I was very nervous. I wasn't sure which way I wanted my career to go. Can you please reconsider me? And he did. And then my first shift, I get on the air. I was so nervous, my hands were shaking. <laughs> The station was empty, thank God, because it was New Year's morning. Uh -huh. I hit the button to play the record. The whole board jams up. <laughs> I must have hit it too hard. You broke it. I called this guy New Year's morning <laughs> to tell him I can't get the re I can't change records. The record's running out, and I don't know what to do. And the guy hung up the phone. He goes, "Call the engineer. Don't bother me. You just woke me up New Year's Day. It was my one day off." Uh, you can't win for uh -huh. losing. I. I you should have heard this radio show, what a train wreck it was. <laughs> you have no friggin' idea. I couldn't change records. I couldn't go from one record to another. Uh, so was, what did you do? The engineer came in, started yelling at me. This big fat guy. And uh, he, he fixed it at some point, I guess. While the show was going and, on. And all the other jocks heard me, and, and they, they, they think I was horrible. I was the laughing stock of the station. <laughs> The program director was going to fire me, I heard, <sighs> because I woke him up. Uh huh. And again, I had to beg for his mercy. I said, I'm so sorry. Because you're terrible. You're horrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's a miracle I sit here today. But this New Year's Day, uh, what year? Like, see, I'd love to know the year. And you don't remember stuff like that. 1977. 70, New Year's Day. So that's officially when you first signed on, sort of. Yeah. Like on the real. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it was awful. <laughs> the Howard Stern Show. In Island Avenue, that's closed with construction. Some of the storms could be on the strong side. Look for highs in the.